CataractCoach.com. Post your polar cataract with a ruptured capsule. We have a beautiful rescue of this tough case. Let me show it to you. Now, here's the posterior polar, definitely a posterior polar cataract. And making a paracentesis here. And here's another one. Now, in a case like this, we already know. Remember, posterior polar, the capsule, the posterior capsule is weak, fragile, or even frankly absent at the site of the posterior polar opacity. Now, the best published studies in this from Robert Osher and Abhir Vasavada have shown us that in those studies, about one out of three or one third of the patients who have cataract surgery for a posterior polar cataract can end up experiencing a complication such as a rupture in the posterior capsule. Now, there are ways we can help combat that and lower the risk, like doing our viscodissection technique, etc. But keep in mind, it's still patient protoplasm, meaning it's still the, dependent on the patient. Some patients, you can do a posterior polar cataract, they can be very rough in the eye, relatively speaking, and the capsule stays intact. In other eyes, you can do everything just beautifully with the proper technique and the newest methods and the viscodissection, and still the posterior capsule can open right up. So that's a known issue and it varies on the patient. So here, a little hydro delineation, nicely done. Notice no hydro dissection, very smart move here. Going with the FACO probe, goal here to get that endonucleus out of the eye. So delineation was to get the endonucleus separated and leave the epinuclear shell and cortex still in the bag. So remember, in a posterior polar, no hydro dissection. Very important. So cleaning up here and removing that from the eye, that comes out pretty easily. So not too dense of a cataract. Usually the posterior polar patients, they have this obviously since birth, but it tended to worsen somewhere in their 40s typically and to into the 50s and 60s, of course. And that opacity tends to spread out wider and then it affects their vision more than they see treatment. So if you see this in someone who's 20 years old and they're, it's smaller and their vision is still pretty good, you don't have to do any surgery just yet. So you can see it's very carefully getting that endonucleus out of the bag. Very nicely done. Beautiful technique here. Dr. Hugo Rodriguez from the Dominican Republic. Fantastic job, my friend. Fantastic. So now removing that um, endonucleus. Here's the last bit of it. Comes up pretty easy. Look in the bag. You still have the epinuclear shell and cortex all remaining. And that's all looking good. So again, remember this. Patients always want the best, and sometimes they're, they're not accepting a reality, which is it's the combination of the surgeon's technique plus the patient's tissues and patient's healing combined that determine the outcome. So now here we go. Time to remove or get out that epinuclear shell as well as clean up some of the cortex. And this is where you're going to see the capsule is going to be open here. So got that epinuclear shell out. And now here comes viscoasis, so viscodissection. So doing everything that exactly the way I do it. And look at the viscodissection. You're able to really get that remaining epinuclear shell and cortex out of the bag. Beautifully done. And so now going inside to remove that, all you have to do is aspirate it. And once that's done, you'll see, boom, we got an open posterior capsule. Again, not the fault of the surgeon. This is patient tissue. Even if I did this case or any other master surgeon in this case, you'd have the same issues there. So now we can see you've got a little piece of nucleus that's fallen a little bit back there, or epinuclear shell maybe, or maybe it's cortex. But now there you go, getting that piece up. And now it's going to be time to remove this, and you're going to have to do a little anterior vitrectomy. So again, I have a surgery of mine. If you go to cataractcoach.com and search for posterior polar, in the last many years, I had one patient where I had to do an antivitrectomy on. And guess what? He had a beautiful outcome, 20-20 vision, absolutely thrilled. So don't worry if it happens to the best of us. But you've got to know how to handle it. So here now, notice doing a bimanual approach through the side ports. Very nice here, getting that antivitrectomy done. I find triamcinolone helpful here to help stain, to get a little bit more um, obvious delineation of the vitreous. And here at the end, nicely cleaned up. Now you can slightly enlarge the incision and put a three-piece lens in, probably haptics and salt because an optic capsule. Let's see what we got here. So delivering our lens. Yep, there's the three-piece. There's the leading haptic going in very nicely. Optic going in as well. 
and then you'll get that dialed into position. So beautiful case here. Again, I want to show you that even fantastic surgeons like Dr. Rodriguez here can have a case like this because of patient tissue. So get the haptics there in the sulcus, get the optic captured, the patient can have a beautiful outcome. So post your polar. Remember, the textbook says one out of three can have this complication. In practice, you can get that number far lower. But remember to explain to your patients, it's not just your master technique. It's also their actual patient tissues and healing.